Greetings and welcome to another impressions video here at Words About Games and today we're going to be looking at Phantom Halls. Phantom Halls is a really neat idea. It's essentially an episodic comedy horror game where you play as a group of teenagers who come across a mansion infested with zombies, ghouls, skeletons, vampires and just about every horror monster you can imagine. Realising that their home time would be in danger if these monsters ever wandered further than the confines of the mansion, they form an occult studies club to take on cases and try and contain the supernatural menace. The club consists of your traditional horror movie character tropes, including characters like the goth, the cheerleader, the jock, the nerd and more. As you progress through the game you're able to expand the club with more characters you find and recruit in the mansion. Each character has their own starting weapon, skill tree and special abilities that make them incredibly useful as you take on more cases and you're able to take between one and three club members with you on each case depending on the mission parameters. While there is local co-op that allows friends to take control of other members of your party, which is a delight, in single player you're usually controlling multiple characters simultaneously. It's a cool system that ties all characters on the screen to the same movement and gives you individual attack buttons for each one. It takes a little getting used to as you need to be constantly aware of what weapon is equipped to what button, which isn't as easy as it sounds if you find yourself surrounded and starting to panic. The default controls can feel a bit weird at first, but they're completely remappable and do a decent job of keeping all the vital buttons in close proximity. Once you've got your head around the game's core control scheme and settle into a rhythm of play, Phantom Halls is a quite satisfying 2D action adventure game. With a full party of three creeping through the mansion, huddled together for safety, and beating and blasting their way through the hordes of spooky monsters that call the mansion home, it's actually quite fun especially as you unlock more characters and cases, which in turn unlock more new enemies, as well as boss fights against vampires, Frankenstein's monster, and many more. It's not so great for those missions where you're limited to one party member from the jump. While you can sometimes find and rescue other party members as you explore, when you're playing with a single character, things can be less fun and more frustrating. This is in large part due to how heavily Phantom Halls relies on luck. Each character starts out with a single weapon and a flashlight, and you'll need to scavenge more weapons, health kits and ammo as you go. The trouble is, you can get really screwed by bad loot, which is totally and completely random. You can completely fail to find any medical kits, which are vital if you don't have the cheerleader and a squad healing ability. Or you could find no useful ranged weapons, or simply keep finding ammo for weapons you don't have. It can be frustrating to sink a lot of time into a run doomed because the game didn't furnish you with the loot you needed, as death means you won't get any reward for your efforts and you'll need to replay the entire mission from the beginning. This is somewhat mitigated if you've got a party of three with you, as you can just about brute force your way through missions if you've got three characters whacking at enemies instead of one. Phantom Halls also has a little bit of an issue with repetition. While there are a pretty big number of cases to tackle from the outset and the objectives and mini-narratives that run through them are varied enough, it can feel like you're sort of doing the same thing over and over again. Each level generally boils down to exploring a floor of the mansion until you find the key item or boss fight that lets you ascend to the next level, until you eventually find what you're looking for, at which point the mansion becomes aware of your presence and becomes a much more aggressive and hostile place. This is compounded by the need to replay missions you've already completed for spoils to upgrade your HQ. As you unlock more characters, you're able to build upgrades for the RV and campsite you call home, which can let you customise your party members or unlock new environments. You're rewarded with spoils, which are essentially crafting materials with certain cases tied to specific rewards. However, to collect enough of the specific materials you'll need to build an upgrade you have your eye on, you may need to replay missions a few times to get what you're looking for. For all the flaws, however, I'm having a good time with Phantom Halls. The core gameplay is simple but satisfying, and even when I'm screwed out of victory by bad RNG, I'm still more than willing to pick myself up, dust myself off, and give it another go. Collecting new characters and unlocking new upgrades, customization options and environments is keeping me invested in exploring the mansion over and over again, and it's always cool to see what infamous horror trope I'll run into next. Thank you very much for watching this video guys. If you've enjoyed it, please keep it here at Words About Games. We've got tons, tons, tons of content, including our weekly podcast, more impressions videos, patch notes, and our weekly indie game of the week. We also stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash wordsaboutgames every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. And most importantly, have a great day.